if you have a skincare routine, chances are it's the same routine that you have had for a very long time. And it may or may not still be working for you, but it turns out there's more to skincare than just finding that one routine, which is why I am so delighted to be talking with my friend and colleague, Rachel Pontillo. And she is my go-to person when it comes to skincare. I'm going to tell you just a little bit about her, and then we are going to dive in and learn what we need to know about holistically healthy seasonal skincare. So Rachel Pontillo is a holistic skincare formulator as well as an educator. She's also a healthy skin media expert and has been featured on a wide range of channels, including Today.com, ABC, Yahoo Health, and more. She's the best-selling author of the book, Love Your Skin, Love Yourself, the Nutritional Aesthetics Practitioner Foundational Curriculum Textbook, and co-author of The Sauce Code. Uh, Rachel is an AADP and IAHC board certified international health coach, as well as a functional nutrition practitioner, a licensed esthetician and an herbalist. And she's got a whole bunch more about her, but we're just going to dive in. Rachel, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you so much for having me. You know, I think, as I mentioned at the top, so many people, when they eventually figure out what their skincare routine is, they just, that's what they stick with. And so I really love your take on what is seasonal skincare? Well, seasonal skincare really follows the path treaded, I would say, by seasonal eating. And mm -hmm. that is that, you know, everything changes seasonally in nature. And we as humans have to realize that we are part of nature. We're not just like living on nature. We are part of it. And its cycles affect us the same way it affects every other living being on this planet, whether it's plant or stone or animal. There are shifts in what we need energetically. There are shifts in what we need nutritionally. And then, of course, there are the shifts that we can feel. Shifts in humidity, shifts in temperature, shifts in darkness, in lightness in our day. And all of these things affect our overall selves. But the part that everyone can see, the skin, is often what we want to kind of address first because it is the most obvious. It's the most visible. I always say this, your skin is often the first thing you see when you wake up in the morning. And then the last thing you see before you go to bed at night. So if there's something going on with your skin that you're not particularly thrilled with, it can kind of stick with you mentally and emotionally. And oftentimes changes that are needed to restore balance can be very simple and when we're talking about seasonally, it, can, might, it might be a shift in ingredients. It might be adding another step of either hydration or emollient protection to your routine, or it might even be shifting up the ratios of water to oil or oil to water in your routine, which a lot of people just don't think about. So that's what we wanna talk about today. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that's so interesting. I never thought about the oil water ratio. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that for so many of us, you, you know, especially you, you start as a teenager and you learn how to start washing your face and taking care of yourself. And then you just, you figure out this one thing and you're like, this is it. Like I will share my Nana used oil of Olay and Pons like all of her life. Oh yeah. You know? But I, what I've learned from you is having that one routine is really not actually good for our skin. And we've learned from you in a previous recording, of course, that we actually have a skin microbiome. Oh, yes. Uh, so, so can you talk to us a little bit about the seasonal approach to skincare and how each person needs to really be able to have those different routines in order to take the best care they can for their skin. Sure. And I want to start with that idea of that one routine, because I know that for some people finding what works can be a long process. It can be an expensive process if you're trying different products. And then when you do finally find something that works, it's like, yes, finally, and then you start buying those products religiously. And then you might find that after a couple of months, 
things are just not as vibrant anymore. And then you start to think, oh my gosh, what's wrong with my skin that these products that seem to work so well for everybody else are not working for me. And the answer is there's probably nothing wrong with your skin. It might just be that something has changed in the season, or maybe you have moved to a different climate or maybe gone on vacation. Something has changed that has a seasonal aspect to it or a weather related aspect to it. And the ingredients that are in that current routine are just not cutting it anymore. And the same can be said about routines. You know, I know we're talking about seasonal today, but routines that we've been using for like our entire lives, Mm -hmm. as we age, our skin changes. So we have to shift our routines as we age to accommodate those changes. But in, you know, that kind of smaller micro type way, we have to think about small shifts throughout the year so that the same effects that we love from that routine that we found can be maintained. And the good news is, is that often it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to ditch your whole routine. It doesn't mean you have to dump the products that you've come to love. Sometimes it's just maybe a shift in how much you're using. Maybe you might need to add a step. Maybe you might need to subtract a step. So I'll give some examples. Right now we are in the beginning of spring here in the Northern hemisphere. And thank goodness, because I'm someone who just does not do well with the cold, dark, damp. I need the sunlight. I need the warmth. So what I've already started noticing is that I might have a little bit more puffiness in the morning because there's pollen outside. And this happens in the fall too, but more with like leaf mold. So in transitional seasons, there might be things that affect us. Even if we're not someone who suffers from seasonal allergies with like, you know, hay fever, coughing, sneezing, watery eyes, itchy eyes all day long, we might still notice a little bit of extra puffiness just from extra particulate in the air that we're coming into contact with. Your skin is still responding even if you're correct. Yeah. Wow. So I, noticed that, you know, I needed in the morning before I have calls in the morning or videos or anything like that. I don't need to do anything different necessarily with my routine, but I use cold water, which has constricting properties rather than warm water, which I might use at night. Mm -hmm. And that's a very simple shift. And a lot of people splash their face with cool water in the morning, but some people also benefit from using ice around the eye area. If you have a little bit of extra puffiness in the morning, um, I don't love the way ice feels on my skin. So I'll do a little bit of gua sha just to like get things moving, release any stagnation. And if there is any fluid accumulated, it kind of helps to move that out Mm -hmm. so that I don't have excess puffiness before I go to, you know, teach a class or do a podcast episode or something like that. Um, I haven't changed anything with my actual products yet, but as the weather starts to get even warmer and as the humidity starts to increase, what I personally need to do is reduce the amount of oils that are in my products because oils are wonderful. There is a big misconception, especially for people with oily skin or people who break out that they should not use oils on their face. And that's not true because if you don't have any oils in your products, anything that you put on your skin is just going to evaporate. It's not going to really stay on the skin long enough to benefit the skin um, nutrient wise. And it's also just not going to be delivering enough protection to keep the moisture in to those epidermal layers. So you want to have some sort of oils or lipids. I prefer plant oils Mm -hmm. in your products. So what I do for winter, because in winter, my face gets so dry and like a prune and I, I just it's, it's just not a good look, but you know, as I'm 45 now and almost 46 and my skin is just not as oily as it used to be. So I don't wake up with that morning kind of T-zone oil slick that I did even, you know, five years ago, my skin tends to be a little bit drier now, which I'm getting used to. Mm -hmm. And I've been using much more emollient moisturizers. And what that means is that it has more oils and butters and waxes than it has water-based ingredients. 
but they're not completely oil-based because you still need hydration. Oils nourish and protect, but they don't necessarily hydrate because oils by nature don't have water in them. So whenever you see like hydrating oil, it, that's, that's like a misnomer. That's not correct. <laughs> not a real thing. No. Well, I love, I love that you're talking about this because I'll share that, you know, so I live in Texas where mm-hmm. it tends to be fairly humid. Yes. Um, I never thought about travel before. Like that's such a good point because one of the things I always do when we travel to certain places, like we went to Arizona one time, we went to New Mexico. When we go to Colorado, the first thing I do like on the grocery list is a bottle of moisturizer because my skin just goes when I'm not, cause I'm so used to all of that humidity. Right. And it's great. But, but one of the other things that I've noticed, and I'm so glad you brought this up is since menopause, my skin is so much drier and I never used to be someone who had problems with that. So that I guess is something else that you have to not only look at the seasons, but look at life stage. The seasons of your life, (laughs) not just the seasons of the year. (laughs) But to really be mindful of how your skin is changing. And it's like that old saying, you know, if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll get the same results. And the same thing is true for skincare, apparently. Right. So, you know, right now I'm coming off of using things that do have hydrating ingredients. I make sure that I have a lot of like flower waters and hydrosols and Mm -hmm. things like aloe vera gel in my moisturizers, but I have less of a ratio of those ingredients than I have to the oils and the butters. And I love beeswax. So I use things that kind of are a consistency of a cold cream for my moisturizers. And then in the winter time, when it's really cold and dry, I also put even a layer of an oil serum on top of that, just to help to further seal in any hydration and add like a layer of protection between my face and the elements or my face and my pillowcase. And um, when the weather starts to get warmer and more humid, I can't do that anymore because I actually feel like those heavy emollient ingredients are like suffocating my skin. Mm -hmm. And while the skin doesn't breathe the same way, you know, inhale, exhale, it does perform the function of respiration, which means Mm -hmm. that it does release oxygen or or CO2 or something like that. I forget which one, (laughs) but respiration is part of the skin's functions. And if it can't do that, because there are literally heavy ingredients weighing it down, like on top of it, then it, you're going to experience things like dampness accumulated, which could cause Mm -hmm. extra puffiness. You might feel oilier. You might feel like your skin is always sweaty. You might just feel heavy and your face feels sluggish. Your makeup might start melting off things like that. So I shift the ratio back to more water-based ingredients and fewer oil-based ingredients, but I do keep those oil-based ingredients in there because again, we need something to keep the water-based ingredients from evaporating too quickly. Too quickly, Because yeah. when that happens, not only does that water from the product evaporate, but if there are humectants, which tend to bind moisture to themselves, they can actually pull moisture out of your skin. which is called trans epidermal water loss. And we definitely don't want that any time of year in warmer times of year, when there's humidity outside, we still might have a drier indoor environment because of air conditioning. Mm -hmm. So these are things that you want to think about. So a lighter weight cream or lotion, and, um, instead of a thick oil cleanser, I might switch to a lighter weight milk cleanser or cream cleanser, which has more water in it as well. So that I'm still getting a good balance of oil and water on my skin. And that also gives me the ability to absorb nutrients that are both water soluble and oil soluble, but I'm not having that heavy kind of, uh, that feeling the same type of weighed down. Yeah. Yeah, Weighted down. Or if you were working out with trash bag pants on, that's, (laughs) that's what we really want to avoid when the temperature and the humidity rises. And then, you know, if you are in an area where it's a high temperature, but low humidity, 
you really have to focus on keeping that hydration on the skin. So you might even need to shift your ratios a little bit differently. And, you know, if you're not a skincare formulator like I am, you, and you're not making your own products, you can do this with the product line that you already love because most product lines carry multiple ranges. So they might carry something for oily skin and dry skin and so on and so forth. So what you might need to do is keep using the products that you already really like and and then look and see what they might have for a different balance, skin type. Yeah. Mm. So if we're going into yeah. summer, maybe you're using something that is a little bit more emollient. You're coming off of that from the winter time. You're starting to lighten up a little bit. You might look and see, okay, do they have something that is similar ingredients, but a little bit lighter weight. And you'll notice that difference in the consistency because lotions have more water in them and they're more lightweight, whereas creams tend to have more lipids in them. So they're a little bit heavier. And then you also could consider adding a layer of hydration. If you do live in a drier climate, which could be something like um, an aloe vera based serum that would go underneath your cream because that is an extra layer. But since it's water-based, it's not going to sit on the skin and cause that heavy feeling. So and the then, water, the water bases have to go first and then first, the cream exactly. the oils go because on top. If you put the oil first, the oil is going to create a barrier that the water can't go through, get through. because right. our own skin's barrier is primarily a lipid matrix, but it, there's also sweat mixed in there. So our own, um, acid mantle does have a mix of, you know, kind of water-based and oil-based I don't want to say ingredients, but structures, uh, sure, fluids, sure. components, components. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but it is mostly lipids. So if you're putting oil on top of mostly oil, and then you're trying to put a water-based thing, it's going to be like water off of a duck's feathers. Mm -hmm. It's just going to roll right off. Mm -hmm. It's not going to stay on there. There won't be any benefit. And then it's just going to evaporate. So that's essentially like, you know, you're going to buy a $60 serum that's just going to evaporate off after 10 seconds and there goes your money too. So there's yeah. kind of no point in that. So if you do want a water-based product to actually stay on the skin, to not only hydrate the skin, but also to deliver those water soluble nutrients into those epidermal layers, you've got to then put something with oil on top of that to lock that in and prevent that evaporation. Well, so speaking of hydration, and you kind of alluded to this earlier as well, you know, aside from drinking water, yes. are there things that we should be doing to help hydrate ourselves so that our skin stays as nice and plump as possible? Absolutely. Um, I want to talk about like internal hydration as well as topical hydration, because it's not just about drinking water. It's about you know, making sure that that water actually hydrates us from a cellular level and out, because if our cells are dehydrated, they're not going to function properly as they rise to the surface mm -hmm. and all of our skin cells, they are formed way below the surface and they're formed with the nutrients and whatever hydration we have from what we consume internally. So we can talk about things like cellular hydration and, um, having, things in our diet that kind of make that water last longer. So I like to talk, talk about um, things like chia seed gel or flax seed gel, mm -hmm. which have that mucilage. If you soak those seeds for a little while, they get that jelly kind of slimy mucilage around them. And you can actually, you know, drink that with water or drink that you can make like a chia pudding or put them in your smoothies or something like that. But what that does is it does something similar as what I talked about topically, when you put oil on top, that gel kind of keeps it active, that hydration active in your system for longer. So it actually can hydrate you a little bit better. And it's also important to make sure that you're getting enough minerals in mm. your body. And some people can, um, you know, add like a Redmond salt or Himalayan salt to their cooking. When you have those minerals that also helps to extend that internal hydration. Um, and then topically, what you can do aside from making sure that you're locking in the hydration with an oil over a water-based product, you can create like a little spray bottle 
that can be a facial refresher. I like to use a blend of hydrosols. Hydrosols are um, a, a product of steam distillation. It's the process that's used to make essential oils, but it's instead of the oils that drip down, it's the water that condenses after that distillation is finished. And what that water contains is many of the water soluble nutrients from that plant and also a less concentrated dosage of some of the volatile compounds that you would get in the essential oil and also the aromatic compounds. So you're getting a very aromatic floral water, but it has a little bit more therapeutic value than just making like a cup of tea from rose petals. For example, rose hydrosol has more nutrients than rose infusion does, but you can still definitely make herbal teas, refrigerate them in a spray bottle, and then just spritz mm -hmm. the face throughout the day. Usually when it gets really dry in my house, I keep a spray bottle at my desk. I keep one in my car. And I, whenever my face is starting to feel dry, I just give myself a spritz periodically throughout the day. And that just helps to refresh and hydrate and, um, that sounds really lovely. Especially it is. And it like feels good and it so smells hot, yeah. good. And the skin never gets to the point where it's so dehydrated by the end of the day that you're, you're already like three steps back in your routine. Yeah. So I, I love just having simple things like that, especially when you travel, it's important to, um, make sure that you have like portable hydration with you. <laughs> So, so actually, you know, one of the other questions that I have, we, you know, we've talked about a little bit about travel, uh, the seasons of life with skincare. Can you break down for us? Like, what are some of the key points for each of the seasons of the year that people need to be aware of when it comes sure. to skincare? Okay. Well, let's start with spring because that's where we are. Sure. So spring is a transitional time similar to fall. But, in, but it's different from fall, from fall because spring kind of expands into summer. It grow, Things grow up and out. It's an expansive energetic. It has more of a warming feeling and things are just wanting to open up mm -hmm. and breathe and grow. So this is a great time of year if you are looking to kind of do a spring detox type of thing, both internally, but also with your skin. Um, what a skin detox is, is that you actually stop using things for a while to give your skin a rest. And then you introduce one product at a time back in, and that just kind of helps reset your skin. So if things were looking lackluster over the, over the winter, then maybe take a few days and just use nothing trust me, your skin will be fine. Just use nothing for a few days just to kind of give your skin a reset and then start introducing one product back in slowly. And what that can also do if your skincare routine maybe hasn't been working as well as it was, it'll actually kind of reset that skincare mm -hmm. routine. So that's spring is a great time to do that. And it's also a great time to do things like facial massage, wake things up, get things moving so that, you know, that stagnation from winter can get moving and things can just start glowing again and growing again. So while it's the cooler months of spring, you might still need to have a little bit of a heavier moisturizing routine, because if it's still cold outside, you might still be experiencing that constriction, even if you are starting to move, move things around and mm -hmm. um, encourage that expansion. And then just kind of follow what the temperature and the humidity does as it gets warmer, lighten up that moisturizer, switch from like a cream to a lotion, um, look at, you know, how oily something is versus how much water it is and how you can tell that what that is, by the way, look on the label. You're, if you're buying a product off the shelf, it's almost always going to have water as the first ingredient, but see how far down the oil based ingredients start showing up. If they're at the very bottom, then you can assume that there's quite a bit of water in that. Mm -hmm. But if there, if there is an oil or a lipid or a fatty acid of some kind in the first five ingredients, then that's probably something that's going to be more of an even ratio of 
oils and water. So that's going to probably be like a cream or a butter. Okay. Um, So that's one way to tell. So this time of year, you want to also start thinking about sun protection again, Mm -hmm. because we're going to start spending more time outside. A lot of people might be going on like vacation for spring break. And so many people come back with sunburn from that or Memorial Day weekends coming up. They're going to go to a barbecue or a pool party and then come back with a sunburn. So you want to start thinking about sun protection. And um, I think a good rule of thumb, you want a mineral based sunblock. Uh, to choose one, I like madesafe.org's um, directory of products. They are certified non-toxic. And then also the Environmental Working Group always does an annual sunscreen guide that usually comes out around June mm-hmm. um, for what, because, you know, so many new products enter the market. So they reassess. And, but you, if you're, if it's not June yet, you can look at last year's guide and they're results will still hold. So definitely start integrating sunscreen. If you're going outside, you want to make sure that you are applying sunscreen. I'm not one of these people who are going to tell you to like wear sunscreen inside. That's not healthy in my opinion, but if you're going to be outside for any longer than like 20 minutes, you want to make sure you have sunscreen as the top layer of your skincare routine. And so moisturizer, sorry, moisturizer, water, and moisturizer, sunscreen. and then sunscreen. Yes. Awesome. And mineral makeup does not count as sunscreen. It's yeah. not, it's not adequate. So yeah. you want to put a layer of sunscreen over your moisturizer. And then if you're wearing makeup, the makeup would go on top of the sunscreen. And then you you might be thinking, oh God, that sounds like disgusting. Cause that's a ton of layers. When you come back inside and you're done being outside for the day, make sure you wash all of that off because Mm -hmm. those mineral based sunscreens are great, but those particles will also kind of form that occlusive barrier on the skin. That'll have that trash bag feeling again. So you want to make sure that you're washing that off as soon as you're done being in the sun. And if you're going to be outside for the day, you're going to the beach or an amusement park or something like that you do want to make sure that you're reapplying every couple of hours. And I know that if you have makeup on, that's challenging. Um, So you want to think about things like hats, wide brim hats. There are a few different brands that offer, um, it's not SPF, it's UPF. The fabric has its own sun protection. Oh yeah, I've seen that in shirts and things now. Yeah, they they make sun hats that also have that. Um, big sunglasses, you can make it like a fashion moment, (laughs) you know, functional fashion, right? Yeah. Love it. These are things to think about. And also, um, another tip that you can add internally, and this is, you know, for any time that you're going to be out in the sun a lot, drink a lot of green tea and it can be cold. It doesn't have to be hot, but green tea has been studied for its photoprotective properties. So if you have a lot of green tea in your system, that is something that can help your body be more resilient against the sun's rays. It's not something that is going to replace sunscreen, but it can help. And then, you know, you're just going to slowly as, as we get into summer, just listen to your skin. If you're putting on your products and your skin feels sweaty or greasy within, you know, 30 minutes, that's a sign that there's too much oil in that. Oh, that's a really good tip. So you're going to want to lighten that up. But if you're putting the product on and your skin is just soaking it in right away and it feels dry again after 30 minutes, that's a sign that you don't have enough oil because just because it's more humid That doesn't mean if you have super dry skin that you still don't need that type of protection. So use your skin as a barometer to kind of tell what you need more or less of. Well, and especially, you know, you talked about this earlier, but for example, I live in Texas and those of us who live in air conditioning, yeah, we're not outside, but we're in a very dry environment all the time. And I know I frequently wind up reapplying at least twice a day just to keep my skin in good shape in the summer when the AC is on all the time, because it's a hundred degrees outside. Yes. So in the summertime, we want to still be thinking primarily about hydration and sun protection, Mm -hmm. because even though we're sweating more and our skin might feel more moist because we're sweating, because there's humidity, the more you sweat, the more you need to rehydrate, right? So that also is true for the skin. And we also want to think about cooling ingredients because 
obviously when there's more heat outside where our bodies are going to hold more heat. And if constitutionally you're someone who tends to run a little hot, you might actually find that you start getting heat related rashes or, you know, mm -hmm. flare ups. If you tend to get flare ups of things like rosacea or just flushed cheeks, flushed neck, um, or if you tend to get acne breakouts, you might notice that there is, there are more red, red pimples that come up. Um, eczema can also be flared by heat. Prickly heat itself is something that some people tend to get when they're just holding too much heat and there's no release of that heat. So you want to think about things that are cooling. Mm -hmm. So cool water, when you're washing your face, when you're showering, not hot, like I would say tepid to cooler is best during the summertime. And again, making sure that there's not too many, too many oils or too heavy of an oils, like really heavy lipids, like a shea butter or a coconut oil might be way too much for your skin in the summertime, but it might be okay for your skin in the fall or winter. Mm -hmm. So you also want to think about using ingredients that also do provide that extra resilience against the sun's rays and some oils such as red raspberry seed oil, um, mm. shea butter actually is one of them. You could use like, instead of a shea cream, you could use like a shea lotion that has a smaller percentage of it. And again, these are not substitutes for sunscreen, but they can help to just increase the overall resilience of your skin to the sun. Mm -hmm. um, and then different green tea extracts, black tea extracts, anything from that Camellia sinensis tea plant has been studied for photoprotective properties and also photo restorative properties. So if you have sun damage or sunburn, drinking a lot of green tea, applying products that contain green or black tea extracts can help to get over that exposure to the sun and also prevent that damage in conjunction with sun protection. Mm -hmm. um, so again, you want to be thinking of cooling things down, cooling ingredients, things like aloe vera gel, cucumber, um, and, the, and avoiding ingredients that are warming. Like um, you wouldn't want something like ginger or cinnamon or clove in the summertime. You would want cooler things. Mm -hmm. um, and then just, again, increasing that cellular hydration, drinking lots of water, drinking lots of fluids that have minerals in them or like those gels like the chia seed or the flax seed to keep that hydration in so that when you're sweating, you're not losing too much water from your body. Right. So there's a huge connection between that inner and outer. Oh hydration yeah. Factor. Big time. So you really want to think about maintaining hydration and protecting from the sun. And then when we get into fall, the energetics flip from what they were in the spring. Instead of being warming and expansive, it's cooling and contracting, right? So we still wanna think about sun protection going into September and October in many areas of the country, um, especially if you do have an outdoor lifestyle, but you might find that you need to start increasing that oil percentage again, because you're noticing that your skin is starting to feel a little bit drier mm -hmm. after applying that moisturizer. And if you're not it's, someone it's who can kind of crazy. Apply, yeah, it's kind of crazy how when the when the humidity drops, like yep. skin responds so quickly. So quickly. Yeah. So if you're not someone who can like reapply your products multiple times a day because you know you're working or you have makeup on and you don't want to redo it every single time, sometimes, like I said, just starting to shift back into more of an oil-based product while still having something hydrating in your routine can help. So if we're looking at you know your current skincare line, instead of using products that are for dry skin only, we might need to or I'm sorry, instead of just using things for oily skin, which tend to have less oils, you might mm -hmm. need to start adding some things that are for drier skin in there. And it doesn't have to be every product. Maybe you switch up your cleanser or your serum, but you keep the same moisturizer. You can kind of mix and match a few things until you see, until you find what works. 
but um, we still we still do, like I said, need to think about the sun protection in the early parts of fall. And then when we get into October, November, um, right before winter starts, we are just starting to think about maintaining warmth, also maintaining hydration, but we don't want to overdo it with the waters because when we're, our bodies are in contraction mode, we tend to also retain more water, which can mm -hmm. cause that puffiness. So we want to be, again, thinking about more oils and fats in our topical skincare and also getting good, healthy fats in our diet to, mm -hmm. to balance that out internally. And then when we get to winter, I would say we only really need to think about sun protection when we're outside in the snow, if we're skiing, snowboarding, um, you know, building snowmen with our families, anything like that, you do want to think about sun protection because sun reflects off of the snow, which can cause pretty bad sunburn if you're not mm -hmm. protecting your skin. Mm -hmm. So you do want or to if still... you're at elevation for skiing too. Yes. The sun exposure is much more absolutely intense. like if you're in Colorado or New Mexico or Utah or somewhere like that where at Maine, elevation. where oh. you're up high. That is something that you want to think about if you are outdoors quite a bit, you want to think about that sun protection. And um, again, that can be with clothing. It can be just physically covering the skin with clothing, which is easier to do in the winter than it is in the summer. But um, you want to think about also protecting the skin from extreme cold and from the wind. Um, you know, I remember when my kids were little before they would go out in the snow, I would always like slather their face with a bomb to add an extra layer of emollient protection so that they wouldn't come back with like wind burnt, cold, chapped red faces. Mm. And it was very effective. And if you're spending time out outdoors, you want to do the same thing for yourself too, in addition to the children. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you have very, very dry indoor heat, heat or indoor environment, either because you have forest air heating or you have a fireplace, you want to think about hydration again, topically, mm -hmm. a humidifier is a great thing to have in your bedroom while you're sleeping, not only for your airways, but also for your skin, because it's going to add that hydration back into your skin while you're sleeping and prevent that trans epidermal water loss from happening. You just want to make sure that you are cleaning that thing and changing the filter regularly, because we absolutely don't want any mold accumulating yeah. in oh, the yeah. humidifier itself and then getting pumped back into your air because that can cause other problems. So a cool mist humidifier just to get some moisture back into your indoor air is a really good thing to have going on during the winter time. And then thinking about thicker creams, butters, balms, anything to add an extra layer of protection to keep that hydration in and also um, just keep keep that keep the nutrients on the skin longer and keep the moisture, the skin moisture levels maintained. So that's really what I like to think about seasonally. So it's a matter of shifting your water to oil ratio, thinking about protection from the elements, whether it's cold, and snow and dryness or humidity, sun's rays, heat, all of those things affect us, especially if you're someone who does have something like rosacea or eczema or psoriasis, going from air conditioning to 100 degree humid weather is going to be a shock to the skin. So you want to think about minimizing that shock in transitioning from indoors to outdoors. Same thing in the wintertime. If you are you know, in an interior space that has like 78 degree temperature and you have the fireplace blazing and then you're going outside and it's 11 degrees with, you know, the snow coming down, that is shocking. So mm -hmm. whenever there's a shock to the skin, there could be a potential flare up or breakout or some sort of response. So just minimizing that shock and allowing for smoother and longer transitions um, both, you know, in your day-to-day -day lifestyle, thinking about indoors to outdoors, but also between seasons. Now, I, I love that you 
have given us so much wonderful information about how people can really like, just by paying attention to what's going on with their skin, by looking at their skincare routine can make changes. And, you know, you keep notes so that you remember what to do. And then as your skin changes, maybe make some modifications, but, uh, are there people out there, if someone was like, well, you know, I feel like I have more skin health issues or whatever, and I want to work with somebody, sure. are there ways for them to work with someone? Not, you know, not like on an ongoing long-term basis, but sure. even have a consult and help them figure out what's the right thing for your skin. Absolutely. I actually offer consulting services myself at createyourskincare.com. There's a little consulting button where you can book a session oh, nice. with me. And we can look at your current routine and I will tell you what I suggest if something is not working now, or if we are looking at a seasonal change and you want to see what more you can do or what you can change, I can help you with that. Um, over at the Nutritional Aesthetics Alliance, which is a professional organization that I'm the president of that trains practitioners in kind of holistic and integrative skin wellness, we have a directory of practitioners who mm -hmm. can help they work, many of them work virtually. They are also might be one that works close to where you live. Many of them are estheticians who offer hands-on treatments, but they also work virtually with kind of the more holistic and integrative um, modalities and tips that they can offer. So that's at skinwellnesspro.com. And um, also at skinwellnesspro.com, we offer a complementary seasonal guide to healthy oh, skin great. that you yeah. can sign up for via email that's right on the homepage at skinwellnesspro.com. That sounds great. Well, this has been wonderful. We've covered such a broad range of topics. And I think the, the best thing that we're walking away with is that you do not have to be stuck with your current skincare routine, if it's not working with you that, you, and you don't also don't have to pitch everything that you're doing. Right. Sometimes a little makes, tweak makes a big difference. Absolutely. That that's so great. So I know you said that people can reach you at create your skincare.com. Is there, if, if they wanted to reach out to you, is there any place else that they should look? Sure. Uh, the other website is skinwellnesspro.com. And then if you're on social media, I am most active on Instagram at Rachel Pontillo. And that's R-A-C-H-A-E-L-P-O-N-T-I-L-L-O. And I'll be sure to put the links down below so that people can connect with you. Rachel, thank you so much for sharing this amazing information with us. So helpful, especially as we shift into a new season and still want to take care of the skin that we're in. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And folks, thanks for listening in. Remember to click that subscribe button down below so that you can stay connected as we cover more holistic wellness topics. And if you have any questions, please be sure to leave those in the comments. Take care and make it a healthy day. Bye.